Hi, this is Sudip Bhattacharji from the University of Connecticut and the U.S. Census Bureau. My co-authors are Nevada Basdeo and Ugo Chukwu Etudo. We are presenting the paper, Increasing Survey Response Rates and Decreasing Costs by Combining Numeric and Text Mining Strategies on Survey Paradata. We focus our research on the American Community Survey operations. It's a multi-dimensional problem with decreasing response rates, increasing collection costs, and a fear of exceeding the respondent burden. This makes it a multi-objective optimization problem with conflicting objectives, and we present the first steps to solve the problem. We focus on three outcomes that are the most common in the ACS. Outcome code 201, which is an occupied household and a completed survey, versus outcome code 218, which is a respondent refusal, and code 313, which is the respondent burden exceeded, both of which lead to a non-interview. For outcome code 201, there are approximately two and a half contact attempts on average. Whereas for a respondent refusal 218, there are approximately five, and for respondent burden exceeded 313, approximately seven contact attempts per household. This means that there are 600,000 contact attempts and more in 2017 or 2018, which did not end up in a response. So given this costly contact attempts, the research question is, can we do better and can we identify non-respondents based on the first contact only? Our research says that we can really identify 80% of non-respondent households based on only the first contact. What will be the impact of this? We can prioritize cases with higher probability of completion, and we can create adaptive design rules based on our model results. So how do we do it? The contact history information is the paradata that is recorded by a field representative when a contact attempt is not successful. Currently, in the ACS, the burden score is calculated based on the CHI information, and the burden score is updated based on each contact attempt. The burden score or the CHI, however, are not used to predict the final response propensity of completion or refusal to complete. So we wanted to investigate and predict the respondent refusal from the first contact only using both the numeric information from the CHI and the textual information from the free flowing unstructured case notes that the field representative in most cases also writes that accompanies the CHI record. So we took the CHI that is structured uh, numeric information, case notes, free form, uh, unstructured text, and we combined the use of case notes and CHI in our research. So the, the CHI based response propensity prediction model is new for ACS, and case notes based response propensity model is new for the whole of the Census Bureau. Now, the CHI data and the case notes data are captured and stored on different systems with different timestamps, and they are not easy to match. We had to go through a significant manual process at first to try and combine each CHI record with zero to many case notes associated with that contact attempt. In the interest of time, we are going to skip on the data merging efforts. Once we merge the CHI records with the case note records for a given contact, we then only choose the CHI and case notes from the first contact, and we merge it with the final outcome of that particular case, of with, whether it was completed or refused, when it happens in the second or the later contact. So our focus is to predict the final outcome based on only the first contact info given in the CHI and case notes. 
we'll first set up a binary predictive model where the final outcome is either 201 versus 218 completed versus refused or 201 versus 313 completed versus burden exceeded and as we said before the prediction is based on information for the from the first contact only our predictors are the first model chi only the second model case notes only the third model all the chi and case notes variables the fourth model are variations of different chi and case notes variables based on the variable importance given by their chi square values we run two different sets of models 201 versus 218 and 201 versus 313 now the occurrence of 218 is less than 10 percent of the data and for 313 it's less than five percent of the data requiring us to do an under sampling of the data for modeling so in the table below you can see that for year 2017 and year 2018 we did an under sampling ratio of 50 50 40 60 30 70 where 40 being 218 or 313 and 60 being 201 so take for example 201 versus 218 in 2018 for the 40 60 sample to create the data set we take all the records from refusal with outcome code 218 which becomes 40 percent of the sample and then we select a random sample from the completed outcome code 201 which becomes 60 percent of the sample we then combine them and then split them into a training and validation set of 75 percent versus 25 percent on the textual part of the data that is the case notes we use the TFIDF factorization for natural language processing and converting the text into numeric representation. We then use five machine learning models, logistic regression, random forest, XGBoost, neural network, and support vector machine to account for the procedural or the model bias in the results. We use four different model metrics, accuracy, which is the number correctly predicted by the over the total number precision which is the ratio of the true refusals over the total number of refusals predicted in other words how many of the predicted refusals are actual refusals this is a good metric if the cost of wrong prediction of refusals is high the third one is recall that is the true refusals predicted over the total actual refusals in other words how many of the actual refusals have been really predicted this is a good metric if the cost of gathering survey response is high and the fourth metric is the f1 which is a balance between precision and recall we now discuss the results and in the interest of time we are going to focus on one of the models which is the best model for the respondent burden that is 201 versus 313 our best machine learning classifier out here was the random forest and we discussed the results for both 2017 and 2018 our <laughs> results were not disclosed so as you can see we have to resort to color codes to explain our results but we can tell you that uh, the deep green color codes are in the high 80 percent around 83 85 percent so uh, let's take a quick look at this in 2017 the 50 50 uh, under sampling gave us the best result our accuracy on chi only okay, versus notes only had almost a 10 percent difference meaning that the notes only model was 10 percent better than the chi only model in terms of accuracy in terms of precision as well as in terms of recall however when we combined the chi and the notes together with all features we got the best result in terms of accuracy precision recall as well as f1 value the story was the same in 2018 where um, 
notes only was better than Kai only by almost 10%. And combining the Kai and the notes with all the features uh, give us the best result uh, in this whole block. The surprising and important takeaway from this one is that the free form notes when properly cleaned and used in a model actually gives better insight into the respondent's final outcome than the chi only um, information and more importantly the chi and the notes together with all the features provide us the best predictive model of the respondent's final outcome so what can we do with these results attached with each of those cases we get a probability distribution of the final outcome based on the first contact only so for example let's take a look at the left hand uh, graph if we know that there are a few cases which are going to be two or ones with a high uh, um, probability we can have differentiated strategies for those cases versus those that will probably be have a high probability of burden exceeded so that can help a field rep to focus on the easier cases finish them up and then spend more time on the more difficult cases where they may have to spend more resources to transform a high burden exceeded scenario into a completed case we see a similar frequency distribution for 2017 as well as 2018 cases so just like the previous one of 201 versus 313 we also created models for uh, 201 versus 218 which is respondent refusal people who refuse to respond um, our results are similar uh, as before our best model was once again the chi and the notes combined with all features uh, the random forest classifier was the best and the 40 60 on the sampling gave us the best results the insight out here is also similar as before the notes only model accuracy was 10 to 15 percent better than the chi only model and the total chi plus notes combined model was the best model similar to the previous one the probability distribution of the final outcome can help us to create differentiated strategies for operation the random forest model also gives us the important features that can differentiate between 201 versus 313 and also 201 versus 218 these are a mix of the chi and the case notes terms which can be used to spot refusal reason trends at different points in time and in different places and can be also used to train the field reps to overcome such kinds of refusal reasons and transform them into completes we also trained the models on 2017 data and predicted for 2018 and we have plans to do it also for 2018 and 19 i am skipping that in the interest of time we have also completed modeling multinomial models with four classes of completed versus refused versus address location problems versus others with predictors of chi and case notes and we included geographic dimension predictors as well as time dimension predictors and used multiple different natural language processing as well as classification models the outcomes are very promising and the work is ongoing in conclusion our research shows promising results from chi and case notes predictive modeling where we used only one contact information to predict the eventual outcome our model can provide reliable recommendations for eventual refusal cases and provide highly confident refusal recommendations, which can lower the data collection priority on predicted cases and add a high value to the burden score in those cases. Our research can also lead to savings in data collection and we continue to fine tune those models.